Have you ever sat over a pint and begun to count how many of the city's pubs you have visited in your lifetime? Have you then begun to wonder if anybody has ever visited them all? Surely not. Well, I'm here today to tell you that someone has indeed visited every single last pub in Dublin, had a pint in each one, and he did it in the space of three years. Oh yeah, and he's not even Irish. Welcome to Pubbin, a podcast about the culture, history and heritage of pubs at home and abroad. This is a story that I've been wanting to tell since I began the podcast. It's the story of one man's Herculean feat of visiting every single last pub in Dublin. Surely that's not quite possible. Well, having said that, I visited, in inverted commas, visited every pub in the city centre in one day earlier this year. In reality though, I simply touched a piece of each of the buildings and didn't venture inside, never mind enjoy a drink in the pub. Well, it's true, it's possible, and it's been done. It's strange that it's not a more well-known story, and I suppose this is an effort on my part to make the feat and the man a bit more well-known and to give him his due for a job well planned and executed. So what do we mean by visiting every pub in Dublin? Well, the criteria was that he had to have a drink in each of the pubs, and he also had to get a member of staff to sign his pub book, which I'll talk more about later, as proof that he'd been there. It wasn't absolutely essential, but he has lots more documenting evidence in the form of photographs taken by him and other customers, as well as a collection of friends and well-wishers that he met along the way. Let me say now that there's no question to the validity of his claim. All you have to do is take a look at social media from the period that he was visiting these pubs to find him popping up in urban and suburban Dublin, in craft beer pubs and stout houses, from the classiest joints to the dinkiest dive bars. Let me rewind back to 2015 when I first got involved with this story. I was tagged by a friend, Joe, in a post by Smith's Pub on Haddington Road. In the Facebook post, there was a photo of a young man who was apparently trying to visit every pub in Dublin. By my estimation, there were a few people here and there attempting to do something similar, but in a very ad hoc fashion and not attempting it with any planning. This young man was different. He was already at pub 150 or so, and he had only been working at it for a few months at that stage. He was still working his way around the city centre pubs, which are concentrated densely in one area. So who was this young man? Was he a local Dubliner who had already crossed off a number of pubs and set his sights on the remaining ones? Or was he from another county and simply a pub enthusiast on a mission? The answer is that he was neither. He wasn't even from Ireland. His name is Yuya Abe. He was a Japanese man in Ireland for three years to study and work. After seeing the post on Facebook about him, I wrote an article and Dubliners went absolutely mad for it. Something about the combination of someone trying to visit every pub in Dublin and the fact that he was Japanese made for a fascinating story. The article got thousands and thousands of views and shares and started a slew of articles on other Dublin-focused websites. Legend. Hero. Give him the keys to the city were the comments on social media when people heard what Yuya was attempting to do. So, why would someone coming to study and work in Ireland want to do such a thing? Well, Yuya isn't your average international student. He's also a bit of a fanatic. And the things he's fanatical about are Guinness and the Irish pub. He worked in an Irish pub in his hometown and loved the concept of the place. Whether he planned out his historic attempt before he left Japan or when he arrived in Ireland is unclear, but set about it, he did. But what was the plan? How did he map it out and begin work on it? Does a complete list of pubs even exist? Yuya's bible for his visit to every pub in Dublin was a directory-style book called The Dublin Pub Spotter's Guide by Mac Maloney. I actually have a copy of it here beside me. I bought it partially because I was curious about the details, but mostly because I knew that Yuya had used it, and I wanted to see how much detail he had to go on. The cover of the book proclaims that you can discover Dublin's 900 pubs. 900 pubs. That's what we're talking about here. If you were to ask me, or others in the know, if they had an estimate as to how many pubs there were in Dublin, it would be closer to the 750 mark. And that does seem to be a bit more accurate in terms of how many Yuya actually visited in the end. But 
Arthur Mac Maloney is clearly a meticulous kind of guy. He splits his time between Dublin and London, where he's a black cab driver, so he knows the streets of both cities quite well, it would be fair to say. Many of the pubs listed in the book have since changed owners and even changed names, so during Yuya's few years in Dublin, he would have had his work cut out, keeping track of which pubs he had visited, where was closed long term, and where was only closed short term and due to reopen. For the most part, pubs don't pop up in new locations, but vigilance would have to be key when you're trying to complete them as accurately as possible. The book divides the pubs of the city and county by postcodes, giving a listing for each pub and also a small section where you can fill in the date on which you visited the pub, ticking it off like any good pub spotter. Here's an example of a typical listing. The Lamplighter, 79 The Coombe, Dublin 8, 01454-2246. Brady's The Lamplighter is a traditional local pub in the Liberties. Its name comes from a law passed in Dublin in the early 1600s that every fifth house had to display a candle to guide passing travellers. The pub, which dates back to the early 1800s, was previously called The Weavers, as at one time the Coombe was home to the Liberty Weavers. There is regular entertainment. And that's it. A name, address, phone number and brief description. No mention of what days or hours they keep, whether it's a friendly spot or how you can get there. They were all the details that Yuya would have to work out for himself. So I've come this far in the story without asking a fairly crucial question. This is all very interesting, but is he the first person to have ever done this or to have attempted it? To my knowledge, and the knowledge of anyone else who has come across the story, he is indeed the first person to have completed this feat. Anecdotally, I've heard of several people trying it over the course of several years, decades, or even a lifetime. I know two people residing in Dublin who for sure have ticked off hundreds and hundreds of pubs and licences, and I've had messages from others over the years who say they're keeping track of all the pubs they visit and want to tick them all off. Maybe living in the city permanently is actually a small bit of an impediment. If you have all the time in the world to visit these pubs, there's less of a sense of urgency to it, and generally life just gets in the way. So it might surprise you to hear that you have visited all of these pubs in the span of less than three years in total. Going back to the media exposure that Yuya got in 2015, he had actually begun his process of visiting these pubs in July of that year when he first arrived in Dublin. When we first heard of him, he had motored his way to 225 pubs, pretty much all of the ones located in the city centre. From that point on, he was getting recognised more and more in the pubs of Dublin by members of staff and customers who had seen what he was setting out to achieve. Pubs would then begin to post Yuya sightings, and no doubt he was gifted more than one pint on the occasion of his visits to certain pubs. There's ample photos of him going behind the bar to pull his own pint of Guinness, an activity he was no doubt very good at following his time behind the bar in his native Japan. Several pubs at that point had got in touch with me to ask Yuya whether he would make their pub his last destination where they would throw a party on his behalf. Little did they know that that date would be two years further away and the party would be held on Yuya's own terms. I suppose part of the appeal of the story is knowing that it wasn't a Dubliner going into each pub, and that in some ways a man from Japan might get a bit more goodwill from the general public and bar staff. I think Irish people are always happy when someone from abroad takes an interest in an aspect of our culture and runs with it. There's also the thought that Yuya likely went into several pubs that might have rough reputations, and where a Dubliner might think twice about visiting. I suppose, in a way, ignorance is bliss, and he probably got a better welcome than a local attempting the same feat may have. I encourage all of our listeners from around the world to consider whether they would feel comfortable in every pub or bar in their home city or town, and then reflect on going there as an outsider as well. drill down into the numbers a little bit. It took Yuya 967 days, or thereabouts, to visit every pub in Dublin. That makes for an average of visiting 0.75 pubs every day that he was in Ireland. So we're talking nearly a pub every day. Just think about trying to organise your life around that much pub crawling. Not to mention that it's 967 pints to consume at least at a cost of around €5,000 with the average price of a pint and not including the free ones that he might have got along the way. And no doubt he enjoyed some pubs more than others and had more than one drink in each place. 
As I said before, the city centre pubs would have been handy enough to tick off, but once you get into suburban Dublin and getting public transport there and back and covering the distances between suburban pubs in areas that you're not at all familiar with, and you begin to see the logistical challenges that this task presented. Clearly Yuya had to allocate some time to the planning stages of each mini pub crawl. Think of your local area and how you might do a pub crawl. I'll take mine, which is Blanchardstown, for instance. If I was to visit the Bell, the Black Wolf and the Greyhound, that would be fairly doable, and there would just be a short walk in between. But add in the Great Wood and the shopping centre, the Twelfth Lock by the Canal, the Clonsilla Inn and the Hartstown House, and having a pint in each, you're talking about a minimum 30 minutes in each place and a decent walk between them, all while getting progressively more drunk. Then you have to get the 39 bus home, and to top it all off, you've got to do the Castlenock pubs the following day before you head back to college and your evening job in a pub. And at least on a trip like that, you could tick off a few pubs at once. But about the isolated pubs with limited public transport options, Yuya must have visited the Blue Light, a brilliant pub high up in the Dublin mountains overlooking the city. He'd have to get the Lewis to Dundrum, and then get the 44B up to Barnacula at either 8.50am in the morning or 5.30pm in the evening, with the last bus returning coming at around 6.10pm shortly after he'd arrived. How would you plan that visit out on its own without breaking the bank and knowing you had another dozen pubs to visit that weekend? It gets less glamorous and more impressive the more you delve into it. Along the way, I was friends with Yuya on Facebook and could see his progress and the messages sent to him by people who had met him along the way and those who simply wanted to wish him well. I actually had the good fortune to run into him once, and as chance would have it, it was in a pub, of course. I bumped into him in Piper's Corner in September 2017. I was there hosting a new pub pub crawl with my pal Lishuk, and he was there with some friends, ticking off the pub as it had just popped up to replace the long-closed Sean O'Casey. Yuya was such a friendly guy, and it was easy to see why the city had taken him under its wing. He told me about visiting loads of pubs in detail that is unfortunately now forgotten to me. One thing I do remember about the encounter was when he pulled out his copy of Mac Maloney's Pub Spotter's Guide. My copy on the desk here beside me is second-hand, but in good condition. It basically just sat on a shelf and then went through a post box once. Yuya's copy was the most productively used and battered book I've ever seen in my life. The binding still held, but it was clear that this book had been on a voyage. Dog-eared, bruised and creased, it had seen some things. Each page bore a date beside each of the pubs with signatures from the 25 postcodes of Dublin. It was a battered old scrapbook, but from a certain perspective, it belongs in a museum. On that encounter, Yuya was well into the 500s of pubs visited and the finish line was within touching distance. It took Yuya six more months to finish every last pub. The ones that existed when he began the project and the new ones that had opened in the meantime. 967 days, 712 pubs, who knows how many bus journeys, and Yuya was coming towards the end of his pub odyssey. So what pub did he settle on as his last pub, and did it have any significance to him? The final pub that Yuya visited was Cavanagh's pub in Lower Lodge, an area beside Castlenock in Dublin 15. He chose it because it was his English teacher's local, and he wanted that to be the last pub he visited. A fitting end to his time in Ireland, celebrating his studies, his pub project, and the friends he'd made along the way. He then went into town for one last pint in the old stand on Wicklow Street, where he worked during his time in Dublin. The very next day, he flew home to Japan. Talk about cutting it fine. So, how was Yuya doing after that when he went home? Well, in 2018, when I was speaking to him, he was working in an Irish bar in Tokyo. Who would have thought it? He told me that he even met a few customers there who'd heard about him through the article I'd written years ago. His fame made its way across the world. Yuya also made some videos when he got home, collages of photos that he took along the way, and listed every single last pub that he visited in a series of seven videos. He's definitely meticulous. Maybe it might be fitting to have a plaque made to commemorate Yuya's great feat of endurance that captured the hearts and minds of so many Dubliners. It could be put up in Cavanagh's in Castlenock in honour of his final pint, or maybe in the old stand where he worked for somewhere more central. I'm only kind of half-joking. I do think it's a story that merits more people knowing about it, primarily because it shows that Dublin is, by and large, a friendly city, and one that embraces outsiders, especially those who share our love of pub culture. But Dublin shouldn't take the credit for what was a brilliant individual achievement, 
by the man, the myth, the legend, Yuya Abe, the first person to visit every pub in Dublin. Cheers to him. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Publin Podcast. This is the first episode of Series 3, and I'm delighted to be back putting out podcasts again. I've got this series all mapped out, and I think you're going to enjoy it. I've got stories from Dublin to California on quite a variety of topics that all somehow link back to the pub. I might at some point do a follow-up episode to this one with an update on how Yuya is getting on out in Japan, or whether he's still in love with Guinness and pubs as much as he once was. Speaking of updates, a lot of you might remember the first episode of this podcast, which was about the story of two Texan brothers whose ashes came to be kept in the grandfather clock of Mulligan's pub. For that episode, I interviewed their brother, Mike Carr. A few weeks ago, Mike got in touch with me to say that he and his wife were planning a visit to Dublin and invited me to join them for dinner. Well, naturally, we had to go for a few pints at Mulligan's first to say hello to the brothers in the clock and to get a photo taken together. I just want to say what a pleasure it was to meet Mike and Vanessa and all of their friends who came on the trip. A few people in Mulligan's heard the story for the first time and straight from the horse's mouth. As anyone who listened to that episode knows, Mike is a great storyteller. One more shout out before I leave you this week, and that's to Colin from Liverpool, who I bumped into in the Swan a few weeks back. I hope you're continuing to explore the great pubs of Dublin. Thanks for listening to the episode, and hopefully I'll bump into you again for a chat. So that's it for this week's episode of the podcast. If you'd like to send me a message with any comments or maybe a suggestion for a podcast topic, you can reach me, John via publin, i.e. at gmail.com. Thanks again for listening, and as always, slauncher.